this world's coming to. Says here they got over 50,000 men working the mines down there in the Congo. <laughs> Lordy me. Why, back in the good old days out west, a man would take his burro and maybe a partner, and that'd be the whole blamed outfit. 50,000 men. All of them experts. Experts to find the gold. Experts to dig it. Experts to build a road. And experts to haul the stuff away. What did they do before experts, Uncle Petrie? Why, in the good old days, a man had to be an all-around expert, or he'd die out there in the wilderness. He must have been awful smart in the good old days. Smart, I say. Wasn't a prospector worth his salt if he couldn't sniff out a vein of gold with his nose. Sniff it out like this? Of course, you have to have a nose for it. What if the gold is way down deep? Yeah, didn't matter to a good gold sniffer. Yes, sir, Bob. You take a man digging for gold. There he was, off by himself, with no one to do his thinking for him. Had to do everything, even his own engineering. And some of them old mines are still standing to prove it. Huh. Look what it says here. Every mine and smelter has a fully staffed hospital to tend the miners and their families. Oh. Why, what are they bragging about? In the good old days, a man took care of himself. Didn't you have any doctors in the good old days? Oh, sure we did. But we didn't coddle ourselves. Suppose I was out mining and my partner busted an arm. Let's <laughs> say, I'd set it myself and have him back on the job before you could say Jack Robinson. And cook. Take a man out there in the open. Why, he could do more things with one pot over an open fire than a, than a woman in a, a fancy tea shop with with a dozen cookbooks to help her give you the indigestion. Men were men in the good old days. You can take it from me. OK, we'll take it from you. We'll take your audience, too. Huh? Oh. And he was going to stay up so late because it's Friday night. Well, I'll bet him down, Ruth. Oh, you'll have to fight me first. said, if these sacks don't hold all the gold, we'll come back and get some more. I know you'd rather cook your own lunches, but uh, this will give you more time for mining. Thanks, Mrs. Morton. Thanks, Mom. Now, where will you be? In the hills at the far end of the lake. All right. I'll be back before dark. Okay. Smell better. Why don't you smell down low? That's where the gold is. You try smelling down low. The miners could smell gold. That's what they did in the good old days. Do you smell it? I smell something. Let me have a try. Think it's gold? I don't know. If we only knew what gold smelled like. Well, we might as well dig here. Okay.
so suspensive. Yeah. Maybe we better try someplace else. <laughs> I can't. Well, then I'll help you. Oh, my leg's broken. Maybe my back, too. Uh, might do more harm than good. Your folks around? No, sir. Just Boo uh, and I. We're mining gold. I'm sorry. We didn't mean to break your door. I broke a lot more of this plane than you could have done with an axe. Yes, sir. If you could slide that door under me. Uh, no, you couldn't pull me out. You mean like on a sled? Yeah. But it takes too much strength. I could get Lassie. Uncle Peachy showed me how to hitch her up. And then she could pull. Come on, see your rope. Is he hurt awful bad? Uh-huh. Does he look terrible? Uh-huh. He said we could slide the door on him, then hitch up Lassie. Thanks, fellas. You live near here? Over by Calverton, sir. Oh. 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 Gee, this is awful. Uh-huh. You must 
must have hit your head awful hard. Remember when I fell on the tree? My bump was nearly as big as his. Uh-huh. Your mom put cold water on it, too. Uh, makes it stop hurting. How's your back? Well, it isn't broken, but someone will have to go for help. I'll send Lassie. Hadn't you better go instead? Lass can run faster. Well, you can trust her, all right. She brought us here, didn't she? The Martins will come and find as soon as they see her. And we'll be here to take care of you. Lassie, go get Mom and Dad. Hurry. Oh. And don't forget Uncle Petrie, too. If I could sit up. Maybe your leg's okay, too. Oh, no, it's broken, that's for sure. I'm gonna need a doctor. If this is the good old days, you wouldn't need a doctor. <laughs> what would they do, shoot me? Oh, no. You do like Uncle Petrie. You would send it yourself. Aw, uh, that's for the doctors. Not in the good old days. Uncle Petrie would know how to fix it as quick as you said Jack Robinson. I bet you he couldn't. I bet you. I'll bet you he could. And I'll bet you could, too. Me? You could try to put a splint on it. Well, okay. But what's a splint? Just a straight board or a piece of metal, say. About as long as my leg. Maybe you could find something in the plane. Try and find two. How long do you think Lassie will take? Not near as long as we would. Now what do we do, mister? Uh, just like I tell you. I'll pull it straight. So the ankle and the knee and the line with my hip. Slow. Slow. I'll keep my toes straight up. Oh, easy. All right, now pull. Pull. Easy. Easy. Like this, mister? No. Now set it down. Easy. Easy. Keep my toes straight up. Oh, we're gonna have to rest a while. What happened to that? dog of yours. Lassie, she's probably at the farm already. Tie those splints tight. That's good. That's it. How's that, mister? Uh. Do you think we did it? I don't know. Feel anything? Something inside my plane, behind the pilot seat. A kind of pistol with a big fat barrel. A pistol? Yeah. 
And there's some other things that look like giant firecrackers. I'll get them for you. No sign of them yet, mister. Maybe they weren't home. Well, you'll find them anyway. This is called a very pistol. What's it good for? Well, during the war, a downed pilot was taught to use every means he could to get help. This is one of them. It's really a signal flare. We're not allowed to light signal fires. Yeah, the brush is awful dry. Well, this shoots straight up, and the flare will die before it hits. I wonder what's wrong with this thing. Well, she's on her way back. I know she is. Wait, Mr. Matthews, please. Just until I take another look. I'll be all right. serving me, Ruth. Thumb's too all fired sore to help myself. Oh, whatever happened to you? Oh, you know that bent blade on the harrow? Oh, yes, we're old pals. Did he tell you about it? No. Yeah. Reckon was all that talk last night about man having to be an expert at everything. <laughs> Funny, I didn't expect them back before dark. Anyways, I decided to fix the blame thing myself. There isn't a doctor could have done a better job on that thumb. They are in sight. She wants us to go with her. Something's happened. Oh, don't get alarmed. Now they were going to the hills at the far end of the lake. Thank you. 
smell smoke. There must be a fire somewhere. There it is. Hurry, Paul. I know it's Timmy. Somebody better get here soon. Maybe you ought to write for help. Maybe you ought to. Okay, we'll fight her together. If I'd listened to your son, there wouldn't have been any fire. But then I didn't have his faith in Lassie. Right handsome splint you got there, mister. Better job than I did on this thumb of mine. Well, there are the doctors that set my leg and splintered it out. Them? After all, their combined age is 17, going on 18. Well, how do you like that? Well, very much indeed. Of course, it took longer than you could say Jack Robertson. Yeah. Huh? And Mr. Matthews told us exactly what to do. I'd still be trapped in that plane if it weren't for them. And Lassie. Well, I think we'd better get you back into Calverton. I'll ride back here with Mr. Matthews. You've earned a ride, too, young lady. I'm mighty proud of the way you boys handle things. I just did like Uncle Petrie said. Are these the good old days, Uncle Petrie? Ah, uh, better than the good old days, Timmy boy. Yep, much better than the old ones. So now I've trained this one, Cicero, to sit up whenever I tell him to. Go ahead, Cicero, sit up. Do it, Cicero. Come on. <laughs> well, almost whenever I tell him to. Well, maybe he's bashful in front of people. Anyway, we enjoyed it, Boomer. Thank you. What's the matter with you, Cicero? <laughs> now, who else has some experience he or she would like to share with the class? Wilhelmina. I have an experience, Miss Hazlitt. Good. Why don't you come up and tell us about it? Last week I told about Melody, my goose. But this time I want to tell about my new petticoat. It's made of real taffeta, so it swishes when I walk. And Mommy stayed up real late last Friday night, after 10 o'clock at least, to finish it so I could wear it to Mary Parker's party. It was her birthday. Oh, I see. Mary Parker's birthday, I mean, not Mommy's. And the material costs $3.70 a yard. 
And the lace was some more besides that. Oh, it is lovely, Wilhelmina. And wasn't it nice of your mother to stay up and finish it so you could wear it to the party? Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you, Wilhelmina. Timmy. Yes, Miss Hazlitt? I've heard some pretty wonderful things about your pet. You mean Lassie? Wouldn't you like to share some of the experiences you've had with Lassie? Well, Lassie's my dog. Haven't you and she had some adventures together? Oh, yes, ma'am. I guess Lassie's about the smartest dog that was ever born. Well, wouldn't you like to tell us about some of those adventures? Well, she's done a lot of smart things. <laughs> you think of something you can tell us about next week at sharing period. Yes, ma'am. Roy. Me and Eddie are going to... Eddie and I. Oh, Eddie and I are talking about building a boat and sailing down the river this summer. We've already got the sail. Here it is Saturday, Lassie. And you haven't done an interesting thing all week. I don't think that's what Miss Hazlitt meant. Teaching Lassie some new tricks? No, Uncle Petrie. Lassie's supposed to have an experience this week. How's that again? Well, you see, Miss Hazlitt said Lassie was supposed to have an interesting experience this week. So I can tell about it in sharing period, Monday. And here it is Saturday. And Lassie hasn't done anything all week. Well, now, if anyone was to ask me, I'd say Lassie's had more interesting experiences than any dog in this county. Ain't that right, Lassie? <laughs> <laughs> That's telling them. Well, I'll be switched. Termites. Hi, Boomer. Hi. My mom said she'd bake a pie if I picked the berries. You want to go along? Sure. Maybe my mom will bake one, too. Don't forget now, only the ripe ones. What's that all about? We're going to have fresh berry pie for dessert tomorrow night. Suits me. Have you seen Paul? Yes, he's fixing that fence so we won't have to worry about the stock while we're at church tomorrow. Bushes like this. <laughs> you don't like berries, anyhow. Uh oh, here comes Roy. What are you guys doing? Picking berries? Our moms are gonna make berry pies. What are you doing? Catching butterflies. What are you doing that for? It's an experience. So I have something to talk about in sharing period. What are you going to talk about? Miss Hazlitt said you were supposed to have an experience. Picking berries isn't much of an experience. I'm gonna have something better than that. I'll bet. Like boomers mice. Sit up, Cicero. Well, he was bashful. Miss Hazlitt even said so. What you got in the bottle? It's got ether in it. That's how you kill him. Kill him? Sure. You can't very well mount him on a board. They're still alive. You're always talking about what you're gonna do, Roy. How many butterflies have you caught? Well, none so far. But I just started. See you guys. Don't take any green berries. Why 
does he have to kill them? Don't worry, Timmy. He probably won't catch any. I think the butterflies are smarter than he is. It's a good thing you saw it. That beam is the main support of the roof. I thought it looked a mite suspicious, so I took a closer look, and sure enough, termites. First thing we got to do is shore up that roof. Don't we have a four before around here? Yeah, we had one left over when we reinforced the loft. I think I know right where it is. I'll tell you what we better do, Uncle Petrie. First thing we've got to do is get a temporary support up. Then you can check the rest of the beams for termites while I finish the chores. Seems to me, why should be in a Boy Scout would make a pretty good experience. It's all right, I guess. But what could we say after we said we went berry picking and Lassie found all the bushes? Not much, I guess. You ought to get Roy to chart. He could make a good story. You know what we ought to do? Go to the woods and chase all the butterflies away and save their lives. a fish with a pole. It's like catching a fish for a pet. For a pet? He'll be Lassie's pet. And we'll name him Speckles. How about it, Lassie? <coughs> How's that for an interesting experience? she being. You sure it's safe? Take my word for it, Ruth. She's sound as a dollar. But it's just resting on the ground. Honey, the weight of the roof will keep it from slipping. The only thing to make that slip will be a flood, and we just don't get very many of them anymore. <laughs> well, all right, if you say so. Check the rest of the barn. So far, the little critters have only started on one other timber. Haven't had time to do much damage. We'll get something on Monday and treat the whole barn. Blockhouse men, the Indians are attacking. <laughs> Mom, where's Dad? Well, he's in the barn, but uh, he'll be coming in the house in a minute. He's in the barn. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Timmy, I, I, I don't think you ought to. I hear you have a real live trout in your sink. His name's Speckles. If we can keep him for Lassie's pet, it'll be a real interesting experience. And I can tell a better story of sharing period than Roy can. What, uh, what's all this about sharing period? 
Oh, well, every mm -hmm. Monday morning, the children are supposed to tell what they've done over the weekend or through the week. It's a sharing of experiences. Roy's always telling the things he's done, but most of the things he says he's going to do. Yeah, he's always bragging. But he's never had a pet like Glassy, and I'll be able to beat him this time. Oh, now, that's not the idea. You're not trying to beat anybody. You're supposed to share. Look, Timmy, it's just impossible to keep a game fish on a farm. He's got to have running water to breathe in and insects and minnows to feed on. Besides, you got no place to keep him here. He's too big for the sink, and you can't keep him in the trough because it's too shallow. He'll get sunburned. Sunburned? Sure, fish can get sunburned. I think maybe it's worth the trouble, Uncle Petrie. What? How in thunder can it be worth all that trouble? Why, so Timmy can be... So, uh... So Timmy will have an interesting experience to share at school. Well, all right, Paul. On one condition, though. Speckles can't take up permanent residence in my kitchen sink. Gee, Lassie, I bet you're the only pet in the whole world that has a pet of her own. Oh, Boomer, fish have to breathe, same as humans do. How can they breathe into water, Dad? I tried it once and I couldn't. That's because you don't have gills. Gills? Uh, sure. You see those little slits on either side of Speckles' neck? Well, those are called gill slits. You see, when Speckles swims, he sucks water into his mouth and pushes it out through those slits. Now, ahead of the slits are the gills, and they take oxygen out of the water just as our lungs take it out of the air. Oh. So, we've got to see that Speckles has plenty of fresh water to breathe. Boomer. Yes, sir? Will you go out in the yard and when I call, turn the water on? Yes, sir. Turn it very slowly, Boomer. And when I give the signal, stop. Okay. Come on, Mike. Now look, son. I'm going to show you something else. Now watch. I'm going to fill this hose. All right, Boomer. That's good. What are you doing that for? Look. That's called siphoning, Timmy. As long as that end of the hose is lower than the water level in the tub, it'll continue to drain out. Gee, Dad, did you invent siphoning? Not quite, but I've known about it for some time. Gee, I guess I've just about got the smartest father in the whole world. Well, maybe not the whole world. I know I've got the smartest dog in the whole world. That I'll buy. Now, Lassie's done her part, and I've done my part. Now we've got to find some food for speckles. Okay, that'll be my part. I know, minnows and insects. Right. Come on, Lassie. And God bless Mom and Dad, and God bless Uncle Petrie, and God bless Lassie. And that means God bless my pet, Speckles, sir. I'm in. All right, now, Timmy, you go right to sleep, won't you? Night, Mom. Good night, dear. See you in the morning. Night, son. Night, Dad. I see.
you suppose it was, Pa? Well, there's been some signs of a fisher lately trying to get at the chickens. Might be he was sidetracked by the smell of trout. Nobody needs me. I'm going back to bed. I'm almost through. Thanks anyway, Uncle Petrie. If anyone was to ask me, I'd say this is a lot of foolishness. A trout like that belongs in a lake. Or in a frying pan. Uncle Petrie thinks Beckles is too much trouble to keep, doesn't he? Oh, it isn't that, Timmy. I think he probably feels that Speckles isn't happy all cooped up like that when he's accustomed to having a big lake to swim in. Anyway, Speckles has his house back, and it's time we all went to bed. Dad, will Fisher come back? Well, I can't guarantee that he won't. Lassie, you stay here and don't let anything happen to Speckles. <laughs> I don't think he'd be very happy in a frying pan, either. Let's see you get out of that one. <laughs> Come on, honey. Good night, girl. Is it, Lassie? I'll be right with you, Lassie. I think we've seen the last of Mr. Fisher tonight. I hope so. You go on and run back to Speckles. Everything's all right now, Lassie. You go on into the barn.
nice hug. Hi, Dad. Why not try the door? The last one won't let me in to see speckles. What is it, girl? Something wrong with speckles? up slipped and fell. Gee, Dad, I guess Lassie's smarter than both of us. Huh? Thanks, Lassie. Thanks more than I can tell you. Then the beam fell down with an awful crash. And if Lassie hadn't growled at us, show them how you growled at us, Lassie. <laughs> and if she hadn't growled at us like that, we would have all gone in the barn and probably all have been killed, or at least hurt pretty bad. Well, that's a truly remarkable experience, Timmy. You left out only one thing. Where is Speckles now? Me and Lassie, I, I mean Lassie and I, we thought it wouldn't be very nice to keep Speckles all cooped up like that, so we took him back home. Oh, back to the lake? No, ma'am. We took him to the river. I don't think Lassie would like it very much, the speckles got caught with a fishing pole. Oh, I see. Well, I think that's one of the most exciting experiences we've had all year. And Lassie, I'm inclined to agree with your master. You're probably the smartest dog in this whole wide world. proud of you. That took a lot of patience. That was quite an accomplishment, son. I never thought you'd do it. I couldn't teach him anything without Lassie. Anyway, Lucky's real smart when he wants to be. Pete Johnson says this county fair is going to be the biggest one we ever had. And I'm ready for it with my hybrid corn. If I say so myself, I think I'm going to win a prize. Gosh, I wish I was that sure about my preserves. I still don't know whether I should enter or not. Well, what's to stop you? You make the best apple jelly in the world, Mom. And your strawberry jam will go down in history along with the invention of the electric light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't know I had such devoted fans. Well, there's no reason why we all can't be represented at the fair. It's a matter of family pride. I know I'm entering the Whitland competition. <laughs> oh, heavens, I don't want to be a traitor to the family. Win or lose, my jam will be in there fighting. <laughs> I guess I'm the only one that's not going to be part of the fair. Oh, of course you'll be part of it. We're all one family. We'll all share in whatever credit's due. Your mother's right, Timmy. After all, take my hybrid corn, for example. Didn't you help to plant it? And what about my preserves? Who picks my apples and my strawberries? You do, don't you? Yeah. And if I win a prize in that Whitland competition, I got you to thank. I'm using that jackknife you gave me for my birthday. But I wanted to do something of my own. But son, you're still a little young. The children's competition is for 4-H club members. And you're not old enough yet for a junior member. Then what are little boys my age supposed to do? Just eat all day and sleep all night? I wondered why they even bothered to make little boys. Oh, 
Paul. Uh -huh. Timmy isn't home from school yet. So? Is that a statement of fact or an ominous forecast? Well, he's always home by this time. I'm worried. Well, sweetheart, all young boys have lingeritis. He might have stopped over at Boomer's house on his way home. Well, do you think I ought to phone and find out? Well, I don't see any harm in... Mom! ahead and say it. I will, because you've got it coming to you. I love you. Mom, Dad! Where were you? Guess what? What? I'm going to be part of the county fair. You are? Well, tell us about it. Is that why you're late getting home from school? I rode in a Calverton. Dad, you knew that dollar you gave me a long time ago, and you said I could do anything with it I wanted to? I used it to enter myself in the horse show. You entered yourself? In the horse show? How did you enter yourself in a horse show? We don't even have a horse. I entered lucky. <laughs> this is to certify that Timmy Martin has registered his entry named Lucky in the farm horse grooming and obedience competition. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, Timmy. I, I, I just couldn't help it for some reason. Now, Timmy, you've entered Lucky in the competition, but it's for horses, not for donkeys. Did the man who gave you the certificate know that Lucky isn't a horse? And uh, never was one. <laughs> he didn't ask me. He said this was the only contest a boy my age could enter. So, I entered Lucky. Timmy, apparently the man wasn't aware that Lucky isn't a farm horse. He just accepted the fact, dear. He accepted my dollar, too. Uh, son, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but I'm afraid you're going to find out the man made a mistake. And when he finds out... Now, don't you see, this contest is definitely for horses. Lucky's just like a horse, only smarter. But that doesn't make him a horse. He's got four legs like a horse, a tail, his head is in the same place. Everything. Everything, but he's still different. I bet Lucky doesn't know he isn't a horse. But I'm afraid the judges will know, Timmy. You know something? It says here in the competition rules that this is an open contest, and any breed or type of farm horse can be entered. Lucky's any type. It's all right, girl. It's going to be you, me, and Lucky. What'd you have to bring that point up for? It's still a horse contest, not a donkey contest. Well, what is a donkey? I mean well, it. What is a donkey? Well, a donkey, it, it's a... Uh, well, it... Do you know? Well, of course I do. A donkey is... A donkey is an animal with four legs. Uh... Just as I thought. Neither of you know what a donkey is. You just know what a donkey isn't. I've got the cyclopedia knows. I'll go get it. Now, what does that one say? Is anybody a lucky horse? Come on, we're waiting. Well, looks as if we've got a technicality if we want to be technical. What does that mean? It means yes for one side and a big no for the other. <laughs> According to the encyclopedia, the donkey, or the burrow, which is smaller, belongs to the equine family. Now, equine is defined as pertaining to or resembling a horse. Here, finally, is horse. Now, zoological. In the broad sense, any member of the horse family, which includes donkeys, burros, zebras, etc. There, that's it. Then Lucky's a horse. Son, according to the encyclopedia, you could also enter Lucky in a zebra contest. See, it isn't that Lucky is actually a horse like other horses. Lucky is a member of the horse family, sort of a cousin to a horse. That means the same thing. Lucky's going to be better than any of his other cousins at the fair. Whoa. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> 
Did I hear you say donkey? Well, now, it isn't really as bad as it sounds at first, Mr. Tumulty. A donkey in a horse contest? Well, please try to see it from my little boy's point of view. It means the world to him. And technically, a, well, a, a donkey is part of the horse family. It's a relative. My dear Mrs. Martin, every family has a relative they don't brag about. Well, suppose I told you that a zebra is also part of the horse family. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you got a zebra, too. Oh, don't you see, sir? The rules of the farm horse contest were made for all varieties of horses. It's an open contest, and it's mostly for children anyway. Well, there's no doubt the original error was mine. And I certainly don't want to see that nice little youngster of yours hurt in any way. Of course, you know I'll be one of the judges. Now, if your son's entry fails to come up to the competition, well, everything has got to be fair and square. Well, then, you mean it's all right? <laughs> a donkey! <laughs> now, I want each of you to try a different flavor and tell me the truth. I'm an expert on strawberry jam. Ah, uh, crab apple jelly is my weakness. I want to try the orange marmalade. The truth now, because that's what the judges at the fair will tell. The truth. Truth. Twelve minutes and eighteen seconds. That's wonderful. How do you do it? Well, with, with just a little more practice, I can do it even quicker. Gosh, a little man. <laughs> Look at that. The most beautiful ear I ever saw. You're so big. I can't believe it. Pretty, ain't she? A sight for sore eyes. Why, Lucky could win first prize in a beauty contest. Animal. It sure is. You're both thinking what I'm thinking. I wonder if we did the right thing in letting Timmy enter Lucky. Donkey's still a donkey, and there's been a lot of beautiful horse flesh parading in there. Are you both forgetting all the tricks Timmy taught Lucky? Don't forget, this is an obedience contest, too. Looks ain't everything. 
Yeah. You're absolutely right. Of course I am. The judges have finished marking their points on grooming, and we will now proceed with the obedience contest. I could enjoy this. I don't think anybody can follow that. Oh, dear, and it means so much to him. And now the next contestant is Timothy Martin with his entry named Lucky. Now this next entry needs a little explaining. Although this contest was intended for farm horses of any and all varieties, we have seen fit to extend the rules just a little more and have accepted close relatives. <laughs> Supposed to sit down until I tell you, Lucky. We haven't even started yet. Please. Oh, oh I, I just can't look. It's a fine-looking animal you've got there, and the dog, too. You must be mighty proud. I am, sir. Well, now comes the hard part. Do you think you can carry it off? Yes, sir. <clears throat> the judges have completed marking their points for grooming, and the obedience contest follows. So please, Lucky, just do what Lassie and I taught you. Okay? And don't forget. Sit down. stand this much longer. Hmm. 
you did it just a little while ago, Lucky. Please do it now. Why don't you try some other things, young fella? Has he learned any other things? Yes, sir. Lucky can do almost anything. But mostly he likes standing still in one place. Well, I'm afraid we can't give you many points for just standing still, even if he breaks the world's record. I'll try his line down to you. All right, Lucky. Try hard. Lie down on your side. One minute, I'm going to cry. It's my fault. I never should have let it get this far. Pretty stupid of all of us. I'm sorry. You mustn't take it so much to heart. The important thing is that you tried, son. We're proud of you. Winning the prize isn't the important part. It's entering the competition just as you did. That's right, Timmy. Everybody can't win. Here, look at me. They just didn't give any prize for a carved finger. Had to be wood. <laughs> Everybody was laughing. Oh, but they weren't laughing at you. Their faces were pointing at me when they were doing it. Well, sometimes people laugh without realizing they're hurting someone's feelings. It wasn't meant to hurt you, son. No. They were rolling in the aisles when I whittled my finger instead of that hunk of wood. And it didn't even give me a chuckle. It just didn't seem funny to me. Look, he didn't even care. I just wanted to show everybody what he could do. I think perhaps we'd better go home. I think it'd be best. Somebody, please help me. There's a fire. My prize pigeons, they'll die. Where? In the dual shed. I locked them in there to keep them safe. couldn't get in there, little girl. Not even any water around here to put the fire out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
my lassie and my lucky. Also, in behalf of the citizens of Calverton, I proudly award you with the second Hero Blue Ribbon. <laughs> What are you kissing me for? Why didn't you kiss them? <laughs>